So, I found a tactic that I think is very, very good, which is a rarity coming from someone who has been lambasted for being not very good at the game. I'll show you how I managed to recover a pretty awful start to a season that turned it into a title winning one where we got to the semis of the Italian Cup as well as the Champions League and are pushing for even bigger things in season two. Let's see what we're doing. And yes, of course, it makes use of the fantastic new wide centre backs, as well as some very basic standard roles and positions that just, just make sense to me. This video, I'll look to explain how I've worked this tactic out in my head, what the certain roles are, what I look for in the players who play this position, and just a just a bit of an analysis of how well this tactic actually did during our first season. So let's let's head into it. A reminder: if you aren't already subbed, feel free. It's completely free. Also, go ahead and like the video, turn the bell on for future uploads, more tactic videos, more player spotlights and stuff like that. Uh, we also stream on Twitch gonna put the link there usually stream four or five times a week mostly during the evenings sometimes during the daytimes as well be nice to see you over there as well but let's head in to the tactic right so here we are it's it's a very simple five at the back tactic five at the back seems to be the meta so far from what i've heard in the uh, beta for fm22 it's a basic back three with the ball playing defender in the middle and either side is the wide centre backs on defend. Uh, these two will happily sort of defend further out wide, which then allows our wing backs on either side to push and overlap in forward positions. I don't have overlap set on because they do that anyway. They they run wide, they get forward. They don't they don't need to be set to overlap. They do their job anyway. Um, of course, all we're also sweep keeper on support. He looks to link it into there also spreads it to wider positions as it is set up in the distributions. Um, a very simple midfield two of a box to box and a centre mid on support. Could do two box to boxes, but you'll see why not why I don't do that. Because on the right, usually this is set to an advanced playmaker. Um, I have it on inside forward for everyone else, but it's because Hakan Shannon all you plays here. This this role is so pivotal in this formation and it also works with our centre mid these two link up in this sort of area right here and are just dangerous Chananoglu's scoring goals and banging tons of assists on the right side we've got an inside forward which is usually where Gabby goal plays he links up and sort of acts as a second striker for our main striker on advanced forward I have both of the wider players set to sit narrower so they're essentially they're essentially playing in the attacking midfield but they can still push out wider when need to. And they are helped out by the wing backs who are constantly forwards, but do still have an e try and make an effort to defend, maybe higher up the pitch as well. Um, in terms of instructions, it's set to a fairly narrow attacking width. I was I tried to go wider, but I was just leaving too much space. They work well, sort of sat together as a unit. Um, play out of defense. I've got I've got the defenders who are good enough on the ball to play out the defense it means we start from the back and we build an attack um, nothing too fancy with passing and tempo just a shorter passing style I don't want it just lumped forwards this isn't a tactic for lamp ball in a sense um, for once I have worked ball into the box which is never an instruction I ever used on FN21 I can never find a tactic that make it made it work but this formation is so important in terms of just building an attack and creating good chances. When it when it's not on work one to box, we create chances, but they're never any good. Uh, we also have whipped crosses on, as we never really have. We don't have the height up front to sort of float the ball in, and with the pace of Lataro and Gabby Goal, they're very good at just being able to tap in some very good crosses, which we have got the wing backs for. Uh, in terms of transition, uh, counter press, 
So as soon as we lose the ball, we look to try and get it back straight away. We want to dominate the game. We want to dominate the game. Um, nothing on possession has been won. I don't really want to put too much stress on the players. There is a lot of more emphasis on players tiring in FM22. So I'm, I leave I leave it just as normal. Um, distribution to centre backs and full backs. Again, that emphasis on building out from the back and building an attack. Sometimes when I need to push for it, it will go more to distribute to the flanks because I can push the wing backs further up. In terms of distribution, take short kicks. I've got the keeper that's able to pass out from the back anyway, so that does help. In terms of out possession, uh, much higher line of engagement. Want to want to be pressing right from the top. Uh, high defensive line, not too fast, not too interesting. Going very high. I don't want to be constantly caught on three balls and counter attacks. Um, defensive width, force the opposition outside. I feel like with my wide centre backs, they're they're defending out wide anyway, but we're not letting leaving too many gaps in the middle for strikers to take on my one centre back that's sort of placed in the middle. Uh, use tighter marking. I've always been a fan of this as a uh, as an instruction. It just it just works. I find um, pressing more often. Again, if I'm pushing for it, I'll switch up to much more often. But more often is a much easier way for me to to just press and get on it. Um, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I've, I've thought about it, not really that fast, because with our pressing we do that anyway, and I don't want to overdo it with the uh, with the instructions anyway. But let's now focus on the kind of players I look for to fill these certain positions. So. I'll go back. Right, so in terms of players and what I look for in these players, I've selected my current first team I have at Inter Milan. It's a bit different to what you'd inherit when you start as Inter Milan. I wouldn't say there's too many glaring differences. I'd say the only additions we've added in this first team is Livakovic, uh, Gabby Gold, and Carvajal and Sula. But you can easily do this with De Vrij at centre back. Um, Dumfries at right back you still might need to buy a right winger and the goalkeeper we had Andanovic to start so this was an obvious replacement in terms of goalkeepers Livakovic is a very good example of the kind of keeper I'm wanting he's very good as a goalkeeper he's not the most amazing as a as some sweeper keepers maybe his passing could be better but we only paid we paid less than 10 million for him he was a an obvious choice those reflexes i find are important one of ones i'm a big fan of composure concentration big big things for me in terms of our wide center backs again these these players aren't perfect but it's what we've got crossing i find isn't the most important thing then they're not putting in loads of crosses eight is okay it's not the best it's not the worst very solid defensively, if that's what you need. Positioning, I find, is very, very key. They need to be good. They need to know where they need to be, as well as stamina, because they're, they're going to be doing quite a lot of running compared to your standard ball playing defender, in which I'm just going to use Screen again as an example. They need, to, they need to be good at positioning. They need to have pretty decent passing. Anything at this sort of level, they've got to be above 12. I also look, the key things for me are heading, marking, tackling. They're big things for me. Composure, other mentals, not massive for me. As long as they're fairly decent, 11, 12s and above, and they have some really good ones, like, for example, Screen Yard's got really into good anticipation of bravery, which is key. And again, I want also some threat of set pieces. Six foot two, we do have bigger players. For example, if I bring up Nicholas Sula, six foot five, 17 jumping reach, he's our menace of set pieces. That, that's that's important for me going into wing back, wing backs pace i like my wing backs to be quick carver how he's probably got one more season with us just because his physicals are going to deteriorate now as he's 30 getting on to 31 crossing again we need that we need them to be good at crossing because they're going to be the ones putting the balls in because our forwards are going to be all bunched up trying to be, trying to score goals dribbling Again, all right, kind of necessary. Tackling, I like them to be able to tackle because they can provide that threat in terms of pressing from the front. 
and getting the ball back quickly and not letting it go, not letting the other team get into a rhythm. Uh, mentals wise, work great. The standard stuff work great, teamwork off the ball, the things you need in your defensive players. Um, in terms of my box to box, we, we have Posovic as an example, Borelli can also do that. There's, there's a few key things I look for. Passing. They've got to be good at passing and tackling. That's 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 their main role. They've got to pass the ball and they've got to tackle. Stamina. They're, they're going to be running up, down, up, down, up, down. They've got to have really good stamina. Luckily, Brozovic has got 20 stamina, so that's never a problem. Uh, teamwork, work rate. They've got to be putting the shift in with their team. I find that is key. Off the ball, is I don't find it as important as the other five aspects we've focused on. But it's still pretty important. They, they, it can't be like five or six. It's got to be pretty good. Uh, going to my centre mid on support, which in this case is Nicolo Barella. Wrong, that's the wrong one. It's see, we I don't really focus on this because of how good Barella is as a midfielder. Passing, tackling again. That's got to be key. They've got to be good at first touch because they're not just running up and down. They're creating chances. Teamwork is key. Work rate is key. Vision decisions luckily i'm very very lucky to have such a world-class midfielder in nicolo barella it, he could do anything this man he could literally do anything the fact that roaming playmaker is the only position he can't really he's not really suited to playing but he's still really good at it just says all about how good this man is um, on the right inside forward key bits for me finishing composure they've got to be good luckily that's what gabby goal has a lot of quick does help off the ball as well i find as forwards off the ball having a good off the ball uh attribute is huge it always has been it was the case last year i think it is the case this year and the standard things like dribbling first touch passing as well can't be too bad i do like them to link up with other players if we're playing this passing game they've got to be good at passing the ball and then on the left in hakan chernoglu the only reason he's not more of a supportive role, yes, his dribbling isn't great. I want him further forwards. He's still very good. First touch, passing technique, the, the, the basic three for a playmaker, as well as that vision. That vision is huge for that's why he's already got five assists in six starts for us this season. It also helps that Channel Blue is amazing from from corners and free kicks. I, he's just way too good. We also like him out on the left because he, if he does go in and cross the ball, he's got that really good crossing attribute that does help. And in terms of the striker, finally, I experimented using Lataro as a pressing forward. I just found that he wasn't getting loads of goals. Well, not enough for how good he is. So we play him as an advanced forward instead. Key bits I look for here, finishing composure. Again, Lataro's got pretty good of those. But he's also benefit he also benefits from his off the ball his technique work rate teamwork just things like that he's quick as well which also helps but yeah that, that is what this team is and how this tactic works and the players that i use uh, i will just before the end of the video show you just how good this tactic is at recovering what was a fairly awful start in our first season to eventually win the league pretty comfortably so i'll see you in a second so as you can see we won our first season by six points the key bit 76 goals can scored 17 conceded all around a perfect performance the second highest score is in the league behind lazio but they conceded nearly three times the goals of us and we conceded the least and only atalanta conceded they conceded one one more than us and then you've got to look at Napoli and Fiorentina who conceded 27. But if we go and look at past positions, you'll see how badly things started. 11th after three game days and we were really struggling. We were after seven game days in ninth. My job was precarious. Again, this period, just post January, I was being, my head was being called for. I was, they were calling for the sack. And then we just tweaked a few things, just added a few bits, changed a few instructions around. We slowly rose up and eventually with a few game days to go, 
took the lead. If you look at our schedule, you'll see just how poorly things started. We just couldn't get a run together. We were just so inconsistent. Then we went on a good run. Then things didn't go too well. And this was the period where they were coming from my head. Then look. Didn't lose a single league match in 2022. A single league match. And the only games we did lose were in the Italian Cup, which I wasn't focused on. And anyway, we beat Milan 5 on the last day when we'd already started sewn up the title so that's fine and then to a very very good uh, Bayern Munich in the Champions League which again we wanted the league that's what we wanted the first season we wanted to retain our title build upon it and the aim main aim of this save which hopefully if you if you are interested feel free come along to the uh, Twitch streams see how we're doing now in season two the my big aim now is I want to Repeat Mourinho's quadruple. I want the Syria, the Italian Cup, the Champions League, and the Super Cup in one season. I don't know if I'll do it. It'll be interesting to see if I do it before I start the main save. But I really want to do it. Even if I don't do it on stream, I will still probably do the save offline just to try and win the quadruple at some point. But yeah, that, that is our aim. So hopefully you can come and see how well or badly that goes. And that is the video for today. If you have enjoyed once more, leave a like, sub to the channel, press the bell, all that, all that stuff. Uh, also go and follow the Twitch as well. I'll link it there again, probably more middle. I don't know, I'm still getting used. To, I'm not very good at pointing on camera. Those who watch the streams will know that pointing to a camera is not my forte, but yes, I hope you enjoyed that. I will leave a link for the tactic in the description as well. And hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Stay safe. See you later.